We're checking out a controller company that's new, or new to me at least, I'd never checked them out, PB Tails, with their newest controller, the Crush, which sports a swappable magnetized faceplate so you can tweak the looks, and some really good on-the-fly RGB control, pretty premium filling carrying case, and did I mention this is a $45 controller? Throughout this video, you're going to hear me say this is a $45 controller because that is the going asking price for their other models, however, this is a $70 controller, depending on the colorway here, $50, bucks, $45 if you hop on board, you're an early backer through this Kickstarter campaign, but if you just want to pick up this sucker on Amazon when it drops, $70, which every aspect, taste, touch, smell, all the senses, it seems like a $45 controller. There's no way on this beautiful earth that this should be a $70 controller. To not waste your time, this is a very interesting controller, looks unlike anything I've seen. And if you're on the Switch side of the house, this could make a good second gamepad for you. Let's get it. This is your controller, Captain. We've reached 6,900 feet. Go ahead and start flicking the sticks and mollywopping the back paddles. Mmm, you don't like back paddles? How about those rear buttons? We've, We've tested, tested almost 100 custom and premium controllers, controllers, and we're only at the beginning. You need a thumbstick guide or a tutorial on how to overclock your controller? Check out the controller playlist. Bing bong. Controller Captain out. Quick disclaimer for my audience, the Stallions and Stallionettes, this controller was sent for review, but this is going to be an honest, comprehensive review. I haven't been paid or told to say anything about it, so if there's any con shortcomings or areas of improvement, improvement, you're going to hear about it, so these companies make better products over time. And a quick forward, this isn't going to be my typical review formula, you're going to get the same information, I'm going to cover all the components, thumbsticks, face buttons, triggers, d-pad, etc, but it's going to be condensed milk into a much shorter video, but you're going to get the same gamer heaven flavor, if you will, on the tip of your tongue, it's just going to get slammed down your gullet a little bit faster, I guess. Don't have all day to bark at you, so I'm going to make this short and sweet. As for the packaging included accessories on the PB Tails Ruby Colored Crush over here. A lot of words there. The Crush is the model, PB Tails the company, Ruby is the color. I do believe this would make a pretty good gift. I know we're approaching the holidays, so I do feel inclined to mention that. Why I say that? This isn't some $300 Pro controller. These things are pretty approachable. At sub $60, also looks really cool, has a really good presentation when you're unboxing it, and you have a separate little smaller box with the accessories, so your giftee could unbox this first and be like, well, what does this go to? And then they unbox the main gift, and they're like, oh, right on. You get where I'm getting at with this. Not very expensive. Two separate things to unbox under the tree. He's happy about it. So this is the Crush Mag case. This isn't very complicated. It's a magnetized faceplate. We've seen these before. This one looks pretty sweet and has some anti-friction rings. Now their catchphrase or slogan is be bold, be you. Be yourself. Be yourself. Be yourself. I should do a compilation or montage of all the catchphrases or slogans, the marketing taglines from all these companies because they're always funny, cringe, or badass. This is none of the three, just it, it exists and it, it's somewhat inspirational, I would say. I just need it to control my dude on the screen. Now, without the use of adapters, dongles, or converters, this is only going to be for Nintendo Switch, Windows 10 or 11, Android 9 and up, Steam. Why is that even on there? That would fall in line with Windows or Mac support if that was on there. And then iOS for you mobile gamers. And this is the contents of the box. Now this is the newest model called the Crush and we're going to see if I have a crush on it or if it's going to be getting crushed in the trash compactor. Again, cool packaging here. If this is a gift for somebody, just looks vibrant, colorful. If I was a kid, I would be awestruck by this. Cool little what I thought was like a business card or warranty placard QR code with the instruction manual, but really it's just a waste of paper. Actually, it has a little hole punch. Maybe this is supposed to be a tree ornament or something. I, I don't know. And some foam in there holding your controller in place. So very nice packaging for an entry level level controller. Over here with the PB Tails Crush, I can give you a little showcase of some of the key features. This is the instruction manual pamphlet or brochure, and it exists, sure. English starts here and continues on right here. And this does walk you through everything I'm about to show you, such as how to go through the RGB lighting and how to swap the faceplate with the mag case. So this is the Crush mag case. Again, really cool packaging. They've made it child and YouTuber proof. I like that. There we go. So you do have a couple of anti-friction rings, which do not pop out. You can see all your points of contact with the magnets. Also some micro scratches in there. Looks like some manufacturing defects. I mean, that's not a big deal. It happens. This is a pretty nice carrying case. It will provide a decent amount of protection. I will say this is also cosmetically damaged. I don't know if I got a refurbished model or what, but it's a, a little bit scraped. I just got this out of the box and it's got some cosmetic defects on it. Maybe this wouldn't make the best gift. And there's like no cohesive theme here. The pull tab on the zipper says Le Mans, which is a race. What, what does that have to do with the 
anyway. You do have a little hanger here if you want to hang this by your backpack to let people know to rob you. You've got a bit of a shorty here, a rubberized USB-C cable, not microfiber braided, no dust covers on the USB-A or C in, no Velcro tie backs, just a little bread bag tie you can bring to the kitchen. Nope, that's not long enough for me. It's about six foot. I only get satisfied with a 10 foot or better. So get this out of my face. I would bring my own cable as this is not proprietary and you can just, you know, bring your own, just USB-C. Get this out of here. This does look like Liberace's controller, a little bit too flashy for me, but it will look good on the wall behind me. So I don't know if this is part of the design or, okay, you know what? I, there's probably something I got to peel off here. So those little scuffs are just buffing out with my finger. My finger. But if they did not, that would be a, 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 a problem to say the least. It looked like it had gouges, scratches, and it was cosmetically damaged. But luckily with just your finger, you can rub those off and does look really nice now. Keep in mind, you do have the swappable jaw in here. But a big problem here is going to be these thumbsticks as they are freakishly slick. And it's not just because they're metal, because I have featured and reviewed, tested if you will, other game pads with metal thumbsticks. In fact, they've even gone out of my way to select those as an option in builders for the feeling of metal thumbsticks in certain builds. But these are slipperier than all those joints. You have these little bad boys that look like a Minto. For my younger audience, you might not even know what they are. They're a, a candy from yesteryear. Actually, I, I think they still sell them. But anyway, these are slippery as all hell. There is no grip here. Styling is a little bit too much for me. A little color pop or some chrome contrast or something is cool, but this is just plastered in chrome. Maybe if you're a Harley Davidson rider in your mid 50s, this might really scream to you, baby. But nah, this is just too much chrome for me, man. Furthermore, I really held that F for a long time. The plastics back here do not feel good. One thing I will say I really like is no physically exposed screws, which will make teardown or disassembly a little bit more cumbersome because you'll have to pop this back shell off with some clips, but it does look nice not having any screws back there. These are removable. They're just held on with friction, not magnetized like the Razer or the Microsoft Elite. Ooh, a little brittle the first time you remove them. The right stick does have a little bit of lettering around the base, which looks kind of cool. This is a good time for me to test the D-pad while I have a little bit more access to it. And uh, by golly, Jeepers actually feels really good. Oh man. Yeah, roll-offs, direction changes, diagonal inputs aren't terrible, feels good on the fingertips. Does look a little bit cheap with that chrome plating on there, but feels great, and that's what's important. Accessory buttons also in a good position, raised far enough from the front shell, and I do really like this home button, which is now the PB Tails icon. Looks really nice. I think this will look a whole hell of a lot better once I remove the silver faceplate and swap it for the blue John. Also, if I don't mention it anywhere else in the video, I gotta mention it now. This is a hefty-ass controller. We are gonna measure this bad boy. 342 grams for comparison. Comparisons and popular controllers or game pads are popping up on screen here with their weights. So as a lot of gamers associate a heavy controller with premium build quality, you saw that with the Power A Fusion 1 and 2 putting fishing weights in the palm grips. Again, along the line of a gift, somebody will grab this and be like, damn, this thing's gonna last me for years. If that's the case, we don't really know, but it, it feels like one solid chunk of steel, like this was carved from titanium, when really it was assembled in a factory in Taiwan, but it feels pretty solid. Let's pop these thumbstick caps on, shall we, boys? See these boys? These have to go in a specific way. I was testing the durability of these clips and thank god they're, they're strong oh shit okay <laughs> recall my last statement about these thumbsticks these are grippy as all hell these are wonderful i wish there were a couple of other options for different heights and shapes such as domed and high-rise sticks but this is pretty nice though and here's your rgb strip which i will say does look a little bit cheap this plastic panel or window for the light to bleed through also little manufacturing defect right there the first step to removing the magnetic faceplate aka the mag case is to remove the thumbstick caps because they will be in the way and the manual says to just push on each side side and lift up so hopefully that works for you with this unit i just simply could not get this faceplate off i even used a pry tool and a knife pushing down on both sides but the two main selling features at least on the landing page for this controller is going to be the customizable rgb lighting and then this mag case but call me a wimp i just cannot get this stock faceplate off in fact i actually damaged it a little bit with this knife unfortunately and i just can't pop it off and i've reviewed a multitude of controllers with swappable faceplates and i just can't get this one to swap i'm very angry right now you can tell by the tone of my voice i'm angry i'm pissed off is what yeah, I'm you get this delectable dingbat working on pc first of all you got we got plug it in that's always a good step one second of all there's a slider or toggle on the top that says x and s s is for switch and x is x input for pc but what i want to show you right now is i cut the lights and set the mood for us is this rgb lighting which not only looks super cool but you also have a lot of control as you can tweak it for the face buttons and for that led pad at the bottom so it's all pretty seamless you hold down this t button which is also for turbo functionality so if you want 
wanted to put turbo on a button, that's how you're going to do it as well. But by holding it down and then rotating the right analog stick, that is so cool. That happens in real time going through the entire RGB spectrum. So you can dial in your perfect favorite color. Yep. I like that one. Boom. Release T and it is now set. Now, if you hold down T and do that on the left analog stick, it's going to control that touchpad at the bottom, not touchpad, but that LED pad down there also very bright and vibrant and you can dim it as well as right now it's a little bit too bright for my liking in order to do that hold down the t button and then these pluses and minuses are going to control Ooh, that's just for the face buttons oh boy i was hoping it would also address this pad down here Oh well. And then by holding down T and up and down on the D-pad, you can swap through the different color profiles for that PB logo. So a lot of RGB customization here, and I will say it actually looks really cool through those face buttons, in my personal opinion. Over here in Gamepad Tester, in an X input mode, I don't have any programs running in the background, such as Rewaz or DS4 Windows, enhancing these thumbsticks to make them better than they are out of the gate. This is the native performance, and as you can see, they snap back to a perfect resting value of 0 0.00002. Beautiful, beautiful. What the fuck? Well, that's not this is over here as we're down there in the one percentile range. What I'm not liking to see over here, that's a huge issue, actually. What this is reflecting is that when you point the right analog stick to the left, your inputs are simply not going to be registered, at least not fully. As you can see, I can't get to the outside of the gates. There we go. Finally, my golly, let's run it again. When I was messing around trying to swap that magnetic faceplate, which, by the way, I was still unsuccessful. I think I kind of jammed in the right stick a little bit, but now it seems to be A-OK, Okie dokie, easy peasy, lemon squeezy as Negan says, and yeah, we're good here. Ah, still kind of doing it. So that weird effect that we were seeing in Gamepad Tester was not seen or felt reflected on the Nintendo Switch in any of the games I was playing. However, on the PC, it was. I launched a couple of games in Steam, Half-Life 2 and Red Dead Redemption 2. And whenever I would pan to the left, the camera would not be panning to the left as fast as it was to the right. So that, 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 that is definitely a faulty right thumbstick module, which is unfortunate. Actually, it is claimed on the landing page. Well, there is no actually landing page on their website. Site, but on the Kickstarter campaign, these are Hall Effect joysticks, which they might very well be. Although keep in mind, as we covered in a previous video, not all Hall Effect joysticks or thumbstick modules, I should say, are created equal. In fact, there are some very, for lack of a better word, garbage, trash HE thumbstick modules you can purchase yourself at somewhere like Alibaba or Wish.com and drop into a PS5 DualSense and they will perform quite a bit worse than your stock potentiometer thumbsticks. Also, a funny little note here, they're claiming the triggers are a thousand hertz, the joysticks are a thousand hertz. Neither of these components have an actual polling rate or refresh rate, it would be the PCB, the board itself, which we are going to test for input lag or delay to see if this 1000 hertz claim is accurate. All right, we are wired, we are in X input mode, and we are going to test the stock input lag or delay to get that. <laughs> they lied to us. Let's run a couple more for steady measure. I'm going to put this right next to their claim of 1000 hertz just for fun. So you can tell that you're getting around two milliseconds of input lag or delay on a 500 hertz stock clock, which isn't bad at all, but it sure as hell isn't a thousand and that is simply false advertising. Let's change that on the Kickstarter page. 500 hertz polling rate, which is going to get you a somewhat consistent, as you can see from the minimum and maximum relatively close to each other and jitter kind of low as well, a pretty consistent wired connection at two milliseconds. This is so weird. So you scroll down and it actually says three milliseconds on a 500 hertz polling rate, which is accurate. We're getting two on a five. So this is accurate, this placard here. So all we really need to do is modify or change, uh, just, just remove this text from these pictures here. Another note that they they should probably edit on this Kickstarter page. They're showing a 2.4 gigahertz dongle. There is no dongle for this controller. It doesn't ship with it. And Bluetooth, that is only going to be for connection to the Switch. If you're connecting to the PC, you're going to go wired despite the fact this has a Bluetooth 5.0 card on board and your motherboard might have a 5.1, 5.2 card, whatever. You can't connect to your PC via Bluetooth, which I also thought was kind of weird. I'm over here on the PB Tales website because they make some other pretty neato Toledo controllers, such as the Chalk 1983. And this wasn't built in 1983. It's a modern controller, but it looks super retro and blocky. Really cool. The only problem is this is a Switch only controller. They always list multi-platform compatibility when it's really only for Switch, PC, and mobile devices, meaning it's not going to have Xbox or PlayStation support without the use of adapters like what Brook Accessories is offering, which still work. It's not part of that crazy Xbox ban with Cronus devices and whatnot. I made a video on that about a month back. This thing is also super cool. I don't know if they tried to make this look like R2-D2 with the paint scheme, but 
but it definitely does. It's a charging dock. And something else, these controllers aren't freakishly expensive. They're pretty much always on the sale for $43, but the price fluctuates greatly on Amazon depending on the colorway. If you get this hot pink joint, which I actually think the lime green and the hot pink looks pretty hot, that's a $37 controller. But if you go with this bad boy, it's a $60 controller. Oh no, that's where they get you. There's a little 40% coupon, so it slashes it down to around this price. Amazon is a fickle beast, very complicated with these coupons and promotions that are always running. But what I'm looking for here is that there's no crazy price gap and it kind of correlates between Amazon, a third party vendor, and then their website, which it does. They're in the same realm here. I'm on the return policy page. There is no separate page for a warranty. However, it is mentioning a 30 day return policy, which is pretty standardized. I'm just going to go ahead and assume, uh, hopefully not make an ass out of you and me, but just assume that there's a one year warranty on this controller in North America, which is bound by consumer law. But we've covered that topic on the channel previously. Is anybody really going to small claims court over like a $42 controller? Probably not. Big old waste of your time. As for models in the lineup, it's not too, too confusing. They have the chalk, which is this blocky bad boy, very retro. The chalk 2.0 metal controllers, which have replaced some of the components from plastic to metal. Little material upgrade. Then we have the dock. So you drop your chalk into the dock. Suck a fat block of Legos. And then there's the PBX Tejik. Looks like a three-in-one MagSafe charger. Interesting. I didn't know that they offered such things. But then the controller I'm reviewing here today, the Crush, does not exist on their website, which I'm not a huge fan of. They do have a Kickstarter campaign for it, but if they're going to have a campaign on Kickstarter or Updude or Upstart or GoFundMe or anything like that, it should definitely be on their official website as well. Even if it's just a coming soon page where it's a blacked out silhouette of a controller, it just makes it that much more official. But when I have the controller in hand and it doesn't exist in the inner webs on their website at this URL, that, that's a problem. Also, I do advise them to add a warranty page where there is a cut and dry periodic warranty policy for their customers, whether it's six months quoted or a year. So as for the pros, cons, and verdict with this controller, we'll start with the cons because there was a couple of them. First of all, that faulty right thumbstick module. This doesn't have drift. However, it could not reach the outside of the thumbstick gate to reach 100% movement on the right thumbstick, which was a little unfortunate. Now, that was only seen in gameplay on the PC. That is mostly because the Nintendo Switch has massive dead zones already pre-baked into its games and also outer dead zones as well. You have very minimal thumbstick control on a Switch versus consoles or PC. I, I know the Switch is a console, but the, the other consoles, the green guys and the blue guys. Also, one of the biggest selling features plastered all over the landing page is the fact that you can swap the faceplate with those mag cases. I could not get that thing off to save my life. I was using all my strength. I even made a custom pulley system with 37 ton capacity and I still couldn't get it off. I strapped it up to my buddy's pickup truck. He floored it in four low, we couldn't get the suck son of a bitch off. And that's really unfortunate. I don't know if the unit I got maybe had some like adhesive that stuck it down or it melted during shipping or what, but golly, it's just supposed to be magnetized and pop off and I couldn't get her to do it. Onto the pros for the price, this has a very premium unboxing experience. You have the outer sleeve that slides off to the side, lifts off to the front. You have foam holding your controller in place and a nice carrying case. Next up, cosmetically, I think this is a very good looking controller. The all chrome faceplate, which I'm kind of stuck with until I can figure out how to remove it isn't the prettiest. I'd rather use that translucent blue one that was sent to me, but cosmetically out of the box, this is a very good looking controller. Along those lines, the RGB control is second to none. The fact that it happens on the board, on the fly, you don't need an application and it happens in real time as you're moving that right analog stick. It's like controlling the radio wheel of RGB. You're dialing in the perfect color for you. Also, the fact you have control of three different areas of the controller for the lighting. Very cool. I also like the fact that you do have two sets of thumbsticks, the metal ones, which look cool, but are unusable. They're so slippery. And then you have the rubber typical silicone joints. And then the last pro, if you can actually swap the faceplate with those mag cases, that's really cool. I just couldn't get mine to work. So as for the verdict, would I recommend this gamepad? Well, if you're on the switch side of the house, I think this would make a good secondary or backup gamepad for you. I wouldn't recommend relying solely on this controller just because there might be some quality control issues as seen from the fact I have a faulty right analog stick right out of the box. And there was also those weird cosmetic scrapes. It almost looked like a refurbished model had been sent to me until I wiped it off and gave it a little TLC, but I have no quarrels with this controller, no major issues with it. And I think it works as a decent switch controller. It is missing some of the functionality that you want from your main switch controller, such as amiibo support. Also, you can't wake up the console with it. You can put it to sleep, obviously, but you can't wake her back up. So while this isn't the most savory gamepad in this price point or bracket for the switch that I've reviewed, it is a, it is a decent offering that has well above average looks. She's a looker. She's good looking for sure. I, I, I'd take a second glance at her. I might even approach and ask for the number. Probably get shot down. But the link to this is shot down there in the description if you want to check it out and I'll see you stallions and stallionettes tomorrow. Peace. Oh, comment section. Tell me what you think of this thing and I'll see you tomorrow.
this. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. To get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of Gamer Heaven, join the community discord and check me out at twitch.tv where I go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my pH balance is on point. Just kidding. Starting June, I'm going to be live streaming a lot. Thanks for watching. This has been AK40 Kevin hosting Gamer Heaven and I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily all the time, 60% of the time, sometimes, most of the time. Peace.